Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's project is going to be inspecting this gas vent line from this water heater that's right behind me right here. Here's the gas vent line and uh, upon inspection it has um, it's failing the inspection and I'm going to show you uh, a few things. Number one why it's failing the inspection and number two how to correct the problem a lot of a lot of youtubers a lot of home inspectors will show you here's the problem with the unit but they never correct the problem well they're home inspectors but in this particular case this is my home i'm doing the inspection i'm finding the problems and i'm fixing the problems i'm going to try to give you the best video possible in the shortest time possible and i only ask that you do one thing for me smash that like button down right now. And with that, let's get on with the show. The blue represents a joist that uh, is running this way here. So don't worry about that pipe support hanger. I just have it off because I'm doing drywall patch and paint and I haven't even put the primer on. So, uh, so I've been taking this vent pipe off and on so I can um, work in this area here unobstructed by this pipe and that is why. So I've been taking it off and putting it back on throughout the day and taking my water heater and putting the thermostat to uh, um, vacation mode when I do that. Now, what's happening is, is that uh, they had, the, the people had this foil tape on around the um, uh, the vent pipe. So I, I cut it all off and I just threw it down on the ground. And as soon as you cut it off and you look at the fitting, the first fitting that you can see is this one right here, which is the most obvious. And right there should tell you what's wrong with this picture. The, the vent pipe is backwards. The, the, the water heater is over here to the right, venting, and the vent gases are coming up and traveling this way. This fitting here should be the male connector, which fits oh, uh, inside of the female connector. If you look at the way that it's installed, it's exactly opposite. We are now looking at the top of the water heater. You can see the draft hood here, the black draft hood that I'm pointing to. And then you see this tape here. Well, this tape should not be here. Now, let me take this tape, this, which is metal tape. Let me take this metal tape off. And lo and behold, look at that. Do you see that massive hole? <laughs> because, because this 45 degree angled pipe here is not sitting properly on the draft hood. It leaves this gaping hole in the back which is uh, not correct. Uh, products of combustion can exit out into the garage, which you do not want, if get, uh, death and all that sort of thing, poisonous gases. So this metal tape was serving a uh, massively viable um, benefit uh, due to the fact of the poor installation. All right, now at this 45 degree, I can see that they are going inside of this one, which is wrong. When I look at this pipe here, which should theoretically, um, I don't know if that's a B, Viper, B pipe or single wall. I'm going to guess it's single wall because it looks like they came out a pretty good distance here. Um, this one here looks like it's also installed so that the um, male threads are pointing down. That should be a female collar pointing down so that the, the male section of this 45 degree can fit inside of it. So it's as if this piece here is also installed incorrectly. All right, here we are up in the attic and there's a lot of storage material. I take time in order to gain great access to this. But this pipe here does not appear to be type B. It appears to be single wall. Type B can be installed one inches one inch to combustible surfaces and that's not one inch that's less than one inch it's about half of an inch um, type single wall I believe it's supposed to be 
I believe it's supposed to be six inches. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's definitely greater than one inch. So that would be incorrect. That would be a failure. All right, we have our handy dandy code check complete book. We're going to turn it over to the mechanical section. And in the mechanical section, okay, so right here it tells you that for a single wall, you have to have a minimum six inch clearance to combustible for single wall pipe. And you have to terminate a minimum of two feet above the roof line. Next is when the vent pipe enters onto the roof. You want to measure from where it enters the roof to where it does, to where the bottom of the termination cap is to determine the pipe length. In this case, it's 18 inches. If there's a wall or structure nearby, you want to know what that distance is from the wall to the vent pipe. In our case, it's four feet. So get these measurements while you're right there. In addition to that, you want to take your app that you have in your phone, Pitch Factor in my case, and you want to get a picture of the slope of this roof. In this case, it is 912. You cannot comfortably walk on a roof that has a slope greater than 612. So if you have a 912 roof, the that's telling you you cannot easily walk comfortably on this roof. So you're, you're going to pretty much stay off of it due to the slope. In addition to that, the the roofing material is a fiber cementitious tile that becomes brittle with age. This roof is at least 20 years old. If you were to walk on this roof, there is a high likelihood that you could potentially crack one of these tiles. So that's something you want to avoid. So due to the material that the roof is made out of and the slope, basically you're not, for an inspection purposes, you're not going to want to walk on this roof. Are, do we have any violations in this picture? Well, for single wall vent pipes, you need to terminate a minimum two feet above the roof line. We're only 18 inches, that's a code violation. If you have another building, a roof or wall, or whatever, within 10 feet of the vent termination, which we do, then you need to terminate a minimum two feet higher. Obviously, we're not higher, so that's another code violation. Okay, now, we want to see if we are within eight feet from a wall or parapet to the vent pipe. In our case, we are. If you are less than eight feet, then you have to go to figure 30, which is right here, and then that's where the 210 rule comes into place. Otherwise, if you had the eight feet of clearance, you could look at table eight. Let's look at the next slide. Table 8 is telling you that, depending upon your roof slope, in our case it's a 912, and if it's greater than 812 up to 912, you need a minimum height of 2 feet. So, you could be code compliant if you move the pipe from here at 4 feet over to 8 feet, and you terminated at a minimum of 2 feet, you would be code compliant for this section of the code. Now, this is taking all the pitch uh, pieces of the puzzle and stitching it all together in one frame so that you can see exactly what the distances are. And the reason why is because the code wants to know what the height is from the flu collar all the way to the vent termination cap. In our case, it's 17 inches plus 23 plus 18, which is right here, 58 inches. Single wall metal pipe shall terminate not less than five feet in vertical height above the highest connected appliance draft hood outlet or flue collar. Well, guess what? We're 58 inches. You need to be a minimum of 60 inches. That's a code violation. We missed it by just that much. Next slide. All right, now we wanna see if we meet this section of the code, length of vent connector. This is the vent connector here single wall connector and we know it's a single wall connector the maximum horizontal length of the single wall connector it really should say the maximum horizontal length of the single wall connector shall not exceed 75 percent of the height of the chimney or vent except for an engineered system we are not an engineered system here 
and the vent pipe, I allocated three inches uh, for the distance of where we turn here to the ceiling, which is that three inches right there. 23 inches, we already know, and 18 inches. Add that all together equals 44 inches. I took the 44 inches and multiplied it by 75% or 0.75. That equals 33 inches. Our vent connector is 65 inches. It is not supposed to exceed 33 inches, and it's almost double that. So this is a code violation. We need to know terminology when we communicate. You have the water heater. The water heater discharges. The natural gas water heater discharges out to a draft hood. The draft hood is at the top of the water heater. That connects onto a vent connector, which is this pipe here. The vent connector connects onto a vent or vent pipe. So don't call the vent leaving the roof as of the vent connector and don't call this pipe over here. Do not call it the vent because it is the vent connector. So when you look at your code and it's talking about single wall vent, what they're talking about is single wall vent is this here. This is the vent. You have to so make sure you get your terminology down. Now we're looking at pictures and determining if we're within code. You have a vent connector. It's installed on a slope. That slope per code has to be a minimum of one quarter of an inch per foot. On my cell phone, I have an app called Pitch Factor. I take my cell phone, I put it right up against the bottom of that pipe and I snap the picture and it produced this shot. That's telling me that I have a one inch per foot slope. The minimum is one quarter of an inch per foot slope, so we exceed the code, which is good. It's good to exceed the code's requirements. So we are code compliant on slope. Uh, measurements. You have to get plenty of measurements when you do this sort of thing. You have to have your tape measure readily available. We need to know the length of the vent connector. We need to know the height from the draft hood, in this case up to the ceiling, to where it connects onto the vent. And that is 17 inches and 65 inches for the vent connector. You're right in front of the water heater. There's a data plate. Here's the data plate blown up. You need to get that picture. You need to know what the input is in BTU per hour when we look at our vent tables. We have a code violation. Single wall vents are not allowed in dwellings. You're not, according to the Uniform Mechanical Code, you cannot go past this penetration and and have a single wall vent pipe. This installation is a single wall vent pipe. It would be good to know what um, single wall and double wall vent pipes look like. Single wall vent pipe looks different than double wall vent pipe because it has two layers of metal, so an inner wall and an outer wall. This vent, vent pipe that we connected onto doesn't have that. It only has one wall. So it is a single wall vent pipe and per code it's not allowed in dwellings. And this is a house, it's a dwelling. Okay, I want to explain what I did. So I took some needle nose pliers and I just went around like and just tried to flatten out and straighten out the volutes on this pipe as much as possible. And I got it and I expanded this pipe to the point where you can then take the male fitting and fit it inside of that fitting right there. So that goal was accomplished. All right, it's not screwed in yet. It's just pushed in there and held tight just by friction. But you can see that I've got that joint made up nicely there. Also with that um, uh, joint right there. And obviously I took this pipe and I flipped it around the other way. I have the draft hood screwed down on the front and rear, which are the only two screws. Uh, it's a little hard to see everything because it's a little congested up here. I'll try to show you from this perspective. But everything is screwed down on the draft hood. And I have the 45 degree sitting flush the way that it's supposed to sit so that there's not a big gaping hole back there. And here's the issue. Your issue is that you have a gap. This pipe is short by approximately an inch and a half to two inches. So, uh, 
this section here needs to be taken out. Another one needs to be put in and, and, and cut to length. And then we'll be good to go. And uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be like 100%. So I gotta run to the, to the Home Depot. I'm gonna grab some single wall three inch pipe and I'm gonna uh, correct that now. Make sure I've got some tap screws here so I can put at least three tap screws, uh, sheet metal screws in each connector including the draft hood and the 45 degree elbows and then we'll be pretty sound. Okay here's your completed project. I have the plates back up over there. There's three screws at least in each one of the connectors. You look at when you look at your connectors now you'll see that they terminate appropriately from the male to the female coming from the water heater. This uh, there's no connector here because I was able to remove that and do this all in one piece. And then when you come up here, there is a small section uh, that's right here. But you do go from, oh and by the way, when the, uh, from the draft hood here, you can see the three, three screws right there. And it's totally in flush, flat, and everything is uh, appropriate now. Looking at your draft, here's your... Uh, match a lighter and it's kind of out of fuel but I was doing some testing earlier and it's it's drafting in here nice so we don't need this foil anymore which should not have been used in the first place that was because whoever did the original job didn't do it properly I do still have a couple of concerns number one that's single pipe vent and they don't have the six inch clearance. So technically I'm still breaking the code on that clearance. I'm not, I'm not, it's not like I'm replacing the water heater at this time and I'm not doing a roof job. If I was doing a roof job, I would change that out to all B vent. Definitely go to B vent and get away from single wall. But I'm not doing a roof job at this time so all things considered, this is a happy medium to be with a sound venting system and be as reasonably close to code as I can get it without going crazy. That is going to conclude this video. I hope you got some information out of this video. If you did, please hit that like button right now. Subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I will catch you on the flip side. Thank <laughs> you.